Hi, my name is Chris Wiltsey. I work for Bike Utah as the Thousand Miles Program Director. Um, so the governor set a goal a few years ago of adding a thousand miles of family friendly bicycle facilities in the state um, and contracted out with Bike Utah to sort of help facilitate that process. So a lot of the work that I do is working with um, local communities within Utah and advocacy groups and I help them plan out and find funding for bicycle facilities, but it's within a certain sort of perspective um, and it's that family friendly perspective. Um, what makes infrastructure and trails family friendly? Um, a lot of that has to do with comfort and safety. So um, a lot of times, like for me, I'm a, I'm a big cyclist, obviously I work for a bicycle advocacy organization, but I also ride a lot with my family. Um, and oftentimes what we see as a family when we're riding together is you'll have um, bike lanes on very busy roads that I would, um, my daughter who's a four-year-old, she started riding her own bike without training wheels or anything. And we've started riding around town. And so I kind of, um, I'm trying to protect her as we go along. And on a lot of streets, there are bike lanes that I don't feel comfortable taking my daughter on. Um, so to deal with that, we created this kind of um, uh, spectrum of possibilities. And it has to do with speeds and volumes of vehicles. So um, at sort of the lowest end, we're talking about these neighborhood byways where it might just be some signage and some traffic calming. So it might be some bulb outs and um, bikes are just riding on the street with cars, but um, you have different features that are reinforcing that speed limit that already exists. And the, the next stage up from that is um, when you're talking about increased speeds, 26 to 44 miles per hour, we're, we start looking at more physical separation. So um, you have things like curbs or bollards, or you can even do parking protected um, facilities. And then at the highest end, we're, we're talking about um, more like highways and things like that. And then we're talking about grade separation and um, separating the path with large medians, with trees and things like that. Um, and I'll give some examples on the next slides. So this is sort of the lowest end that I was talking about, low speed. Um, it's pretty comfortable where, um, where I live. We actually have um, a great facility like this and I take my family on it all the time. Um, even though cars are behind us, there's, there's all these great features that slow down um, the vehicles and make it uh, safe. And then at the next level of facility, this would be more of like your sort of strictly urban context where the speeds are a little faster than you would have in a neighborhood and there's more vehicles. Um, so you can see in this picture, there's this physical separation. So it's, um, it's still a bicycle lane, right? But it has this, this physical protection and um, having this, this family friendliness is as much about um, perceptions of safety as actually making people safe. So the goal is to achieve both of those things is improve perceptions and also make them safe. And then finally, um, this is what we see a lot of in Utah are these separated multi-use paths. And these are great, um, but kind of the way I look at these are, these are highways. And then you'd have other things coming off of these other facilities like um, a separated curb protected um, cycle track, or you might even have like a neighborhood byway come off of one of these. So much, much in the same way that a highway or freeway functions. So as um, I've been working on creating this kind of perspective, uh, Bike Utah, or sorry, Bike Walk Provo reached out to um, my program and they were talking about the transportation master plan that, um, Provo City had been developing um, with parametrics. So parametrics, I, I think I actually see Vern Kiesler here, but they did an awesome job of creating this great network throughout the city um, in their plan. And they they even 
included in their plan what I would describe as um, a family-friendly perspective. So they talked about how there's these different comfort levels within this plan and how according to those different comfort or the, the type of facility that you put in will increase those comfort levels. And so what um, Bike Walk Provo wanted to do was take that perspective that was in the transportation master plan and also this perspective um, within the governor's program and look at this network that was this bicycle network that was in the transportation master plan and, and sort of apply it. So what kind of facilities would go where within this network? And so I was able to do a um, level of traffic stress analysis for these bike facilities to kind of look at, okay, within this context that we have presented, what kind of facilities would we want um, on the phase one projects? And the cool thing about um, Streetlight is it like from the perspective of somebody working in an advocacy organization, it really does give you the tools to function at a higher level. And even, even if you're talking about like working within a city, like me as a former employee, if I had had something like this, as I worked in public works at another city, um, it would have been such a game changer. It's, it, um, it's really giving people the tools to look in a more refined way, specifically at um, active transportation, um, because in a lot of ways, we do have a lot of data for vehicular traffic, but we don't always have data for um, act mode, other modes of transportation, so active transportation. Um, we, we don't always have count that many counters out or there's there's a whole multitude of issues that we're kind of running into. So Streetlight helps you to overcome some of those obstacles. So what I was able to do with Streetlight was to look at both um, the volume of vehicles on these specific roads. And some of it was um, kind of speculative, right? Because some of these roads don't actually exist or they're not um, connected into into the broader network at this point or um, there hasn't been a whole lot of development in the area where these things exist um, so that looks at kind of the context okay what does the road look like what does it, it um, within the transportation master plan what have they designated it as um, functionally and then I was also able to look at the AADT of all of these roads. And, and as somebody who works statewide, the reality of me like being able to go out and do these counts at these different roadways, it, it's just not realistic and it's, it's just not going to happen. But to be able to sit down at Streetlight on their platform and um, look at this and be able to get uh, dependable numbers, I think that's huge. Um, so this on this slide, you can see an example of what I'm um, talking about where I was able to get speeds. Um, so this is one example of a facility is Lakeview Parkway. I was able to get the um, speeds for vehicles um, within this um, roadway and um, then from there, I was able to make recommendations for all of these phase one projects. Um, and then also along with the average daily traffic. And um, it, it's really interesting because a lot of these facilities, you can see sort of talking about context and the transportation master plan, you can, you can see on here that the vehicle speeds and the average daily traffic don't necessarily warrant some of these um, larger or more robust facilities. But then when you start looking at the um, transportation master plan and what some of these roadways have been designated as, um, and then you actually look at the context, you, you start to see what kind of facility would need to be there. So it, it's kind of a balancing act of um, you're looking at the future and you're also looking at what is right now and um, making those recommendations, at least in terms of this um, 
high school um, or family friendly perspective. Um, yeah, and, and I recognize that this maybe isn't as sophisticated as the Fair and Peers project, but I have worked on a lot of other um, projects because I have a, a license that covers um, a big chunk of Utah County. And so I've been able to look at, like for UVU, um, I was on their bike committee and we were able to look at um, things like how many people are riding their bikes to UVU. Um, nobody had any idea, um, just because it goes back to the, what I was talking about, um, not have, necessarily having that active transportation data. And everybody was surprised by the numbers that came up or um, looking at uh, where people are coming from within um, like origin and destination data within Provo is really interesting to look at that um, and be able to just pull that up and have it at my fingertips. It's been um, pretty eye-opening. <laughs>